five seconds, and here we go. Today, we're going to learn about a healing modality called chelation, but there's more. There's other healing modalities that Dr. Rajiv Chandra, Chandra is going to teach us today. So fasten your seatbelt. We're going to learn and grow together. Here we go. Oh, by the way, Dr. Chandra, you need to dance when at the beginning of the oh, I want to see some of your moves. <laughs> like your best I if you're in need of hope, you know where I'll be. I'll be right here, right here. We're going to have fun today. You can count on me. I'll be right here, right here waiting for you. That's how you do it. This is the place you can always turn to when you need a friend. The Lillian McDermott Show. To reach out to Lillian, visit her on the web at whenyouneedafriend.com. Now let's all learn together. Here's Lillian McDermott. Hello, my listening friend. It's so nice we can meet each other on the air on this beautiful best day ever. And for those of you who are just stumbling upon my show for the first time, let me tell you. And for those of you who have been listening to my show since it started or just recently, I am so glad all of you found your way to this show. It is not an accident. Everything is divine. And I want to share a little bit what this show is about. It's about a, creating, a, providing a place where we can have alternative ways to heal. We can learn about them. And it is my mission to make awareness, responsibility, and truth a part of our everyday life. And I hope you, my listening and viewing friends, will feel empowered to embrace a new truth and live the life of your dreams. Now today, if you have any questions for Dr. Chandra, because the topic is a topic that we have not discussed ever on the Lillian McDermott Radio Show. And I'm learning along with you, although I do research, but I am learning along with you. And I am excited that um, Dr. Rajiv Chandra is here. For those of you who have any questions about chelation, because that's what the topic is, I just gave it away. The number to call is 407, not 904 or 321 or any other number than 904. Apparently, we've been bothering somebody with a 904 number. It's 373-5959, 407-373-5959. There are so many alternative treatments out there that benefit us. Today, we're going to talk about a few in particular. One of them is chelation chelation. What is chelation? Why should we even care that there's such a thing called chelation? And so today we have cardiologist from Brevard County, Dr. Rajiv Chandra, who is going to answer these questions and more. He's also going to tell us about this other thing that we can do. It's called EECP. And we're going to talk about that later on if we have time, because there's so many questions that I have. And since it is our sole purpose in life to give and receive love and knowledge, I am so grateful that Dr. Rajiv Chandra is here to do just that. Welcome, Dr. Chandra, to the Lillian McDermott Radio Show. Thank you, Lily. Thank you for having me. I know that you have been on the radio before. You had your own radio show, healing people and helping people learn a little bit about how the body heals naturally as well. So share a little bit about your background and what led you to learning about alternative ways to heal the body. Well, I started my uh, medical career back in the late 70s, early 80s. Um, I became a cardiologist in 1986. I uh, graduated University of Miami, moved here from New York. And uh, I moved to Brevard County about 31 years ago and I've been practicing cardiology. And one of the things that uh, struck me very early, even back in the 80s, was that we have one of the best medical cares in the world. And yet our health care is just not there. So what is this paradox that America has that we provide the best research, the best minds, the most Nobel Prizes, and yet we can't get this great care to the people. And that's when I began to explore various other modalities. What was the issue? and why it is that we, and how it is that we can improve the healthcare in this country. Well, that's so. a very admirable, Dr. Chandra. Many 
doctors learn what they need to learn in medical school. They get their CEUs throughout the years, but there are very few doctors that go above and beyond the box. If you understand what I'm saying, there, there are doctors that continue to be told what to do, but then there are doctors that go, you know, this doesn't make sense. I want to go beyond that. What happened to you? I know you read it. I know you understood it, but did anything in particular happen to you that made you look at alternative ways to heal? It started with my late wife. I met uh, my late wife, uh, Peggy. Um, and even before we got married, it was very clear that she had a broader view of what healthcare was. She had been in the healthcare field just like me for the longest time. And she was an out-of-box thinker. And she began to get me thinking very early that what I was doing was just staying in the box. And there was a whole world out there where we could become real healers as to becoming, as opposed to becoming just providers. And this is the, this is the one thing, and it may sound like semantics, but our medical care is now being run by providers. And that carries with it a, the insinuation that they don't think outside the box. They just provide what is given to them as opposed to healers and physicians and nurses who think what is best for the patient. Yes. And I'm so she grateful. We started on all this stuff. Yes. Well, you know, they say that before, be, and be, because of every successful man, there's a, a wonderful woman somewhere along the way creating that. So yeah. I'm, I'm grateful that you listened to your wife and uh, your late wife, and, uh, and I'm sorry for your loss. And I know you and I have talked about that in the past, and I'm grateful that she sparked that. That was her mission, to spark that in you so that you can continue that mission through her through you with her. And we're going to continue our conversation with Dr. Rajiv Chandra. I want to encourage you that if you have any questions about this topic, we're going to talk about healing modalities like chelation and EECP when we return worldwide at whenyouneedafriend.com. And I'll tell you what EECP stands for later on. You're just going to have to listen. We'll be right here waiting for you worldwide at whenyouneedafriend.com. So Dr. Chandra, now that the show is not, it's like we're like commercials are going right right now. Chelation, how long of the 30 years that you've been in Brevard, 31 years that you've been in Brevard, when did you first hear about chelation? Well, I heard about chelation, oh, what, maybe in about 20 years ago now. I had heard about chelation for a long time, but it was more like, you know, this is something that we don't really do as cardiologists. These are, this is what is done by those people who don't understand medicine, just a <laughs> And uh, so I began looking into it and my late wife, of course, started bringing some literature to me and I began looking into it. And I got a background in biochemistry and she has a background in science as well and suddenly began to make sense as to why it would work. And we began to look at it and we took some courses. We went out and said, give an open mind, she said. Let's go and look at what chelation does. And we began to hear some great stories about how people had been benefited. And that's when I began to become a believer that maybe, you know, not for everybody, of course, there's always a limited set of people. Sure. Every modality works and, you know, not everything works for everybody and every disease. That's not what we're getting. So we began to look at what was it that chelation did, how did it work uh, and how and what to, what to look for in the patients who would benefit from it. You know, that's, that's great. I'm so grateful that you're open to that new truth because there, you know, many doctors spend a lot, well, all doctors, all, all professions that end up with a, a JD, MD, and a, a particular specialty spend a lot of money on education on that specialty. And many get focused on paying back that student loan and forget the fact that we need to continue to grow. And we need to right. go continue to learn beyond what we, we were told. And I've had doctor after doctor come on the show saying, you know, Lily, I, I um, was very discouraged that after three years of medical school, the dean comes in and says, you know, you're, you're not going to heal anybody. So don't ever think that you're going to heal anybody. You're going to manage their medication. You know, mm -hmm. that, uh, did you experience that when you were going to medical school? I didn't see that the time was coming. I normally feel this, but I'd love for you to answer that later after the break. 
You can text Lillian McDermott or leave her a voicemail at 407-373-5959. Once again, here's Lillian. Welcome back to the Lillian McDermott Radio Show, where we always learn and grow with one another. And today's teacher is Dr. Rajiv Chandra, and he is a cardiologist and went beyond the the scope of what he was taught in middle school school started looking at the evidence of other healing modalities that uh as you said dr chandra i'm going to quote you that you thought that alternative um healing was for people that didn't really know and understand medicine so That's share a little bit about that i love that i love your openness about that that you know even you believed that um you know, holistic alternative was a little woo woo. And uh, you went beyond and you started considering that there could be a new truth about this. So share a little bit about um, your journey in learning about these other modalities, especially, particularly, let's talk about chelation. So out of the 31 years that you've been in Brevard County, when did you start looking at chelation? How many years ago? It was about 20 years ago. Okay. Um, and, you know, I have to admit that I was dragged into it, kicking and screaming by my late wife. <laughs> you know? So I have a background in research. I did my PhD at Columbia University. And one of the things you learn while you're doing research is to constantly look at what is the current um, understanding, the current um, uh, truths, as they call it, and look at them skeptically and then go back and see if they really hold up. And that's what kind of sparked my interest in chelation when my late wife said, you know, here's a modality which I think we could use in helping your patients. And I said, nah, it's not gonna work. It's that holistic stuff, it's a scam. Everybody yep. says so. She says, and that's exactly why I want you to look at it because everybody <laughs> thinks yes, it's fun. a scam. Look at it and tell me why you think it's a scam. So I began looking at it. And if you look at the, and I'll take a few seconds and explain the history of, uh, of chelation. If you look at back uh, at chelation itself, somebody noticed that. Oh, you muted yourself accidentally, Dr. Chandra. You muted yourself. If you can unmute, there you go. World War, um, that a lot of people who worked in the uh, lead factories in Detroit making lead batteries began to have heart disease at a very young age. And what we learned was that lead, of all the heavy metals, lead somehow in, catalyzed the production of heart disease. Hmm. And nobody quite understood why lead would do that. And a lot of physicians in, in Detroit began to look at removing lead as a way of fixing heart disease. And back in the 50s, somebody published a small article where he had taken this new substance called EDTA, ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid, EDTA, which when injected into the body would remove lead. And he showed that people with heart disease, with blockages in the legs, with diabetes, were getting better with it. Wow. Now, he did not do a big study. He just did a small one. And just like in anything else, it kind of fell in, it fell by the wayside because EDTA, which had a patent in those days, lost its patent and nobody could oh. look and do a big study. So it got lost. And then along came bypass, along came stenting, along came balloon procedures, and they were much more immediately effective, you know, as opposed to chelation which took about 40 treatments or 35 treatments. This was immediate, it was instantaneous, and it became the, the, the way we would practice medicine for the longest time. So I began to look at the data, began to look at the biochemistry behind it. And that's when I began to realize that maybe, and I wasn't 100% sure, obviously, I said, maybe it helps. So let's try it out. Hmm. And so, of course, when you say, let's try it out, did you try it out on yourself? Did you do the research? Do you, do you find out, because you're talking about lead, but there's other reasons why we should try chelation. Because I was, you know, for every hour I do in the show, I research three hours. And there were so many different reasons to try chelation. Can you share a little bit about other things? Because I saw that there's EDTA chelation, there's iron chelation. 
are, are they different? What are there other kind of kinds of chelation? So share everything that you can uh, think of. <laughs> everything, okay. So we have about everything we were afraid to ask. Do it. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, chelation actually, the word chelation just means a claw. It just means it's, got, it's it's like a claw. It catches on to a heavy metal and it removes it. So chelation can be used as a genetic term to mean removing anything that is toxic in the body. Got by it. putting in another substance so you could eat something that chelates the stuff in your gut that is toxic in a sense you could have an infusion that would remove uh, heavy metal like cobalt uh, thallium it could remove iron too much iron is also being chelated so the generic word chelation is to remove something toxic so let's start with that so there is a huge field of people who believe that toxicity from heavy metals, from toxic substances in our body, colon cleanses, all of these things are in somehow detrimental to our health. It makes sense, obviously, if you have something toxic in your body, you're gonna remove it. So that is, is, is something that's not in dispute by anybody. However, when we get into the chelation on the way a cardiologist refers to it, uh, you're talking mainly about substances that cause heart disease to get worse. Mm -hmm. So from my focus point of view, yes, there is iron toxicity and of course chelation is used for that. Uh, there is cobalt toxicity, there is chelation that is used for that. There are people who are doing it for other reasons, mercury. I mean, there is a way to remove mercury and that's big in people who eat a lot of contaminated fish or fish oil. Uh, we do have mercury and and so, all of these things are chelation and where I began to focus in on, obviously that field is so big that it would take me more than a lifetime to figure that out. Sure. Where I began to focus was my expertise, which was biochemistry, antioxidants, and how they related to heart disease. And so the chelation of lead was where I began to focus in on. And that's where I have spent the last 20 years looking at. Um, the other stuff does come into the picture, um, but I'm really not an expert on the rest of it. A little bit about mercury. And there's a lot of people out there who know a lot more than me about the rest of it. I focused in on where lead is and, and how that affects heart disease. And I'm happy to tell you, there's actually a large study on that as well. So well, we'll talk about that. Yeah, yeah. And, and what, what comes to mind when you're talking about lead and mercury, um, there are people that listen to the show that want to detox their body from metals that um, heavy metal toxicity. And we, we were told that unless we remove the silver, which I did, I removed all the silver from my mouth, the silver fillings, um, that unless you do that, you're truly not detoxifying everything. Can you do chelation and still have silver fillings in your mouth? Or well, it is the, the way we remove heavy metals is from the blood. Now, a vast majority of our heavy metals are sitting inside the cells of the body. And the cells of the body actually have a bigger space, almost five-fold bigger space than the blood does. So what we do is we inject the substance into the blood, the blood pulls it out of the cells, and then the kidneys excrete it. That's the usual way we remove heavy metals. The problem is if you have silver fillings, if you have fillings of mercury, and there's a constant input, then it's like, yeah, you're removing it, but you are pouring in the same time. So in the end, what you're doing is just circulating it through your body. You're really not removing it. So yeah, you have to remove the source as well. Absolutely. Okay. And then, so my follow-up question is, how do you know that the condition that you have, okay, specifically because you're a cardiologist, let's focus on the heart and our cardiovascular system. How do we know, what are the diagnostic tools to measure that metal okay so the the measuring of the metal is the hard part and that is really been and you know you've heard about what happened in flint michigan as well where the lead got contaminated into the water sure. and then a whole bunch of studies came around that showed there wasn't that much lead in the water and here is the here is the problem with measuring lead lead is so common that if you really want to see lead in something, you have to use special test tubes. In fact, your gloves have to be manufactured in a lead-free facility. Wow. Otherwise, the lead in your gloves will contaminate the blood specimen. Wow. 
You know, so it's very, very, very hard to measure lead. There are ways, there are ways. And one of the ways we used in chelation was we would do a chelation, measure the lead in your urine before we did the chelation and then measured right after the chelation was done, the lead in the urine. And by seeing the increase in the urine, we could predict how much of lead burden you had because the blood, the chelation gets it from the blood, combines with the lead and the kidneys excrete it. So the increase in lead in the, in the urine would show you how much, of inc how much you had in the first place. But again, the test tubes you use, the connection containers you use have to be made in a lead-free factory. Okay, so are there any other ways to measure this? Because it sounds like it's uh, very difficult. We have to go to a specialized location to draw our blood and do it properly. Um, do we assume that everybody just has lead and mercury in their system? It needs to, if, if you have a heart condition, um, that could be a, a given and just assume that we have it? So there's a research trial going on right now okay. and called the TAC trial. Uh, the NIH has funded it. We were part of the TAC trial when the first part got done. The second part has just started uh, and we are talking about how we can all get involved in it. So they do use lead-free uh, gloves, lead-free stuff to measure it. That's a research thing. For the vast majority of us, when we start to look at lead, it's everywhere. Yes. We had leaded gasoline in this country. And, you know, I used to go running in New York City at four o'clock in the morning. Little did I know I was taking in so much lead. So all of us have lead. It's very hard to find somebody in this country at this point that has no lead in their body. And if you begin to look at children around the country and measure it using the extreme research tools, yes, you do find lead. Uh, so what we do is we use a proxy, which is do the chelation, measure the lead, before and after you do your first chelation. It gives you an idea whether the person has lead or not. Here's something I learned. Mm -hmm. Even Home Depot carries a, a lead testing tool. I mean, it's a little chem chemical that you can put on your pots and pans. And so if you buy yourself a nonstick pan, once it gets scratched, and I have some of those, I tested the lead behind it. There's lead in there. Yes. Yes. I mean, everything has lead in this country. I mean, we do have it. So I take it pretty much on faith that there is lead everywhere. If I find a person who has no lead and we do the chelation and they find no lead and we have found a couple of people in the times we did it and we told them that, you know, you have no lead, you don't need chelation. And that, but that's an exception. It's very, it's an exception. Yeah. Okay, so everybody look at your pots and pans, especially if they're nonstick. I have no nonsticks anymore. Uh, I use um, stainless. So check it out. If there's any scratches, throw it out because you're contaminating your body. And that, that is something that is hard to believe. You know, we believe that these products that we're buying are made to protect us. You know, we have all these groups that are, assigned to protect us and they're passing through. I don't know how this is happening, but we need to be our own MD, our own medical detectives and our own advocates. And we're going to continue our conversations because there's a little story about the FDA with Dr. Chandra when we return worldwide at whenyouneedafriend.com. We'll be right here waiting for you. Yeah, I do want to talk about you know, the fact that, and I'll disclose it to you, my, viewer, my, my viewers, before my radio people hear it. Um, Dr. Chandra, you have stopped um, doing chelation. And I mean, let's talk about the benefits that you saw with your patients. Um, I'm sure that you've done your own um, study. And in a way, you've seen all your patients. Um, what is a, a way, what have you seen? What are the benefits prior to chelation to, to um, when you did your last chelation treatment? Well, actually, we did two things. We did chelation both clinically for years. And then when the trial started, it's called the TAC trial. It's a government-funded, huge study. Mm -hmm. We showed, and the TAC trial showed very clearly, that people who have diabetes and heart disease, who had a heart attack in the past, live longer getting chelation than they do in standard medical therapy, yeah. which includes bypass and stenting. Yeah. So it is actually more powerful in diabetic patients who've had a heart attack than getting a bypass done. Wow. We've actually proven that scientifically. The government funded it. The study was published. 
the problem is the study was stopped along the way. Um, and, you know, the reasons are different. The government felt it was uh, one reason it wasn't done correctly or whatever. Uh, we disagree with it. We, I was involved in it. And there were a lot of allegations from a lot of people uh, back and forth. And much of it was just nonsense. And I know for a fact that the, uh, the FDA is now involved in the new study. And the new study has just started. And it is, it is going to show what the first one showed. There is no way out of it. I mean, it definitely is beneficial. And the problem is going to be is once it shows, and it's going to be about four or five years down the road, once it shows it is beneficial, how will then the practice of medicine change? You know, it's funny because in, my, in doing my research, I know that, and I know that you already stated that um, you focus on chelation for, for cardiology and how it affects cardiology. But um, it's interesting when you do some research. I, I was looking at PubMed and, mm-hmm. um, and the, that's pubmed.gov. For those of you who want to research chelation, there, you just enter the word chelation treatment and there's different kinds. There's the e, um, EDTA. There's iron chelation, and you can look at um, the different ones on PubMed if you want to use that as your source, or you can just do a search. And it eventually led me to, I researched deaths, side effects for chelation. Mm -hmm. um, There seems to be, (coughs) there seems to be, excuse me here, um, there seems to be a connection with the children and some of the things that were, you know, overdosing, can you overdose with chelation or is that taking that particular one and taking that out of context to make chelation look bad? Because they're using it for autism. They're using it for children that have been given diagnosis um, of, um, of the mind, you know, where their, their, their brain and their, their mind is not functioning the way that is typical. Right. And, you know, I I can talk about that a lot. That was one of the uh, issues that uh, was raised. Um, Personally speaking, I mean, I don't even know why that patient was getting chelation. I Mm -hmm. looked at the medical history, not somebody I would have recommended for uh, for chelation. Uh, It was a child, first of all, and uh, the person died. And I don't know whether it was the chelation that caused it or whether uh, something else happened or the physician just was not up to speed and giving calcium, which is one of the things that the body needs and chelation also removes. And we have always kept calcium as a antidote to chelation if something went wrong. In all my years, I only had to use it twice. But when you need it, you need to have it. So, you know, adequate precautions were not taken in that one particular case. And it became a big issue. You know, it's interesting, one particular case, and that's what happens when you look at alternative um, therapies. Um, yes. you, you look at one particular case, but how many people die each day of taking pharmaceutical drugs the right way for the right reason with the right dose? Nobody even that's an eye. Okay, so when we tr- return, I'll talk about my social and media and, and, and then I'll reintroduce you. 407 373 5959. Once again, here's Lillian. Welcome back to the Little McDermott Radio Show, where we always learn and grow with one another. Today's teacher is Dr. Rajiv Chandra, and he is a cardiologist. And by the way, I'm going to disclose that Dr. Chandra is no longer doing chelation at this time. I mean, I'm going to just put it this way. At the time, this time, because he is an MD cardiologist, um, and I'll let him share the story, he has a lot to lose. So he is here to just share the information. I understand that um, you know, people are gonna to wanna to learn more and that is why we listen to the show. This show is bringing you a new truth that I hope that you will embrace, research yourself, go to pubmed.gov. That is a place where all publications are and you can just enter the word chelation bring your own, do your own research. But just like Dr. Chandra was taken there kicking and screaming, he finally realized the earth was not flat. There is a new truth out there and he embraced the sphere. And so because of, of the fact that we, this, we talk about many alternative ways to heal here, 
we're, we're very, I'm lucky to have these wonderful doctors that are coming on and other uh, people that are coming onto the show to share things that maybe not necessarily we hear in the mainstream media. And you heard earlier that chelation lost its patent. So guess what? It loses its, its luster. So we need to bring it back. We need to allow these doctors or, or promote these doctors to, to bring these modalities of healing back into their practice so that they can treat us mind, body, spirit all the time, not just the body. So um, today I want to encourage you, and as always, I wanted you to go to whenyouneedafriend.com. Let's continue this conversation. Let's grow together and learn this new truth that many of my guests share. Not everybody shares the same no, not everybody shares the same values that I do or Dr. Chandra does, but I ask that you consider learning and making, finding out your why. Why is it that you don't believe? Why is it that you do believe? It can go both ways. I want to encourage you to go to whenyouneedafriend.com. Please become a subscriber. And once you subscribe, you'll get free gifts and the show is sent right to your phone or tablet. I want to encourage you to go to my sponsors to figure out different ways without my sponsors there would be no show so i want to encourage you to go to when you need a friend.com not only subscribe but also figure out different ways that we can support the sponsors that are standing up for the show they're taking a stand and saying you know what it's time i'm sick and tired of being sick and tired and i'm taking back my life i want to encourage you to go to my social media right there when you go to when you need a friend.com you can subscribe to my youtube page like me on facebook all my social media you can subscribe to my podcast there's so many different ways to be connected and uh, and last but not least, you can always call me at 407-373-5959. You need to make sure that um, you call 407. Put this number in your, in your favorites. That way you can click on it and not have to worry about the, the number. Okay, so today we have Dr. Rajiv Chandra. He is a cardiologist who went beyond the box to learn about a healing modality that um, helps helped his patients until just recently when he was no longer doing that. But before you talk about that, Dr. Chandra, can you share a little bit more about the connection of lead and heart disease? I got a question, a text asking for that connection. If you can repeat again why there's a connection between lead and heart disease. Okay, so let's talk about the science first. Okay. Um, so it turns out that lead is not only a heavy metal, but when it gets into the cells of the body, it becomes a catalyst. And what it catalyzes is a reaction called the Fenton reaction. And all this is well documented in the biochemical literature. Okay. The Fenton reaction is a strong oxidant. So you've heard about antioxidants. Everybody's heard about them. They make you live longer. The oxidation that lead causes, it takes the, the bad cholesterol. There's um, different kinds of cholesterol. There's total cholesterol, there's good cholesterol, there's triglycerides, and then there is LDL, the bad cholesterol. What it does is it takes the LDL, the bad part of the cholesterol, which really has no function other than a waste product in the body, and we understand that from classical medicine as well, it oxidizes it. And when you oxidize LDL, it becomes extremely active. So here is something that is a toxic substance that is becoming even more toxic by the very presence of a little bit of lead. Doesn't take much lead to do this Fenton reaction. It converts LDL into oxidized LDL. And the oxidized LDL is hard to get rid of. And what happens, it, it, it deposits in the vessels of your legs, of your, of your brain, of your carotids, which is the vessel to the, and to the heart vessels. So that's the theory behind it. And it's, it's a thing you put together when you read different parts of the literature. And that is where I believe chelation helps. So what we are doing in chelation is we're removing the lead, slowing down the Fenton reaction, converting LDL back into its antioxidant form, into its unoxidized form. And therefore the body can remove the LDL. Obviously you want to cut down the amount of LDL as well with your diet, maybe medications, maybe exercise. 
you want to do that anyways but the little bit that you have this is another way of stopping the progression by cutting down the bad ldl so it's the bad it's the active form of the bad cholesterol that lead promotes okay so that bad ldl mm -hmm. where are we getting that source because everything has a source is but, that source because we promote a whole food plant-based diet on the Lone McDermott radio show. Can you absolutely. share a little bit more about that? Because I just had someone on my show, um, on, and for working on my computer yesterday that said, I want to release weight. I just don't know how. I want to be healthy. I just don't know how. What do you promote your patients to do if they want to look at the nutritional aspect of it? So the LDL is made in the human body and it's made from substances that you eat. So saturated fats make more LDL. Uh, the liver makes it as well, right out of some of the food that we eat. So antioxidant foods that you have, blueberries, uh, the various berries are good because they will also cut down your oxidation of LDL. Taking too much saturated fats will make more LDL so cutting down saturated fats and trans fats is a good thing as well. Uh, whole grains, definitely important because grains have fiber in them and fiber mops up the fat in your body and therefore removes the actual production of it. Diet is a huge part of it. Of course it is. When we eat, oh, I would say thousands of times more material in our food than we take in a pill. The pills only work when the diet is also good. That's critical. Of course it is. So that's one part of it. Exercise is a second part of it. When you exercise, you make your human, make the body use much of this stuff in energy. And so you're removing part of it. And then on top of that, there is medications that you can use. You know, there's natural stuff like red yeast rice. There are the statins. There's now new medications that also cut down the production of LDL. And then there is chelation, which will make the LDL. So it's a multi-pronged approach to cutting down one of the most common diseases we have in the United States, which is hit it from all angles. Because when you do that, if there is synergy in bringing down the bad disease. Okay, so share with my listening friends, my viewing friends, why you're no longer doing chelation in your office. So we did the study and, you know, I used to do chelation. We had great results from it. I was very happy with it. Um, oh, I think now about 15 years, 10, 15 years ago, uh, and I don't remember when it was, uh, the, there was a movement in cardiology to actually look at chelation because it was very widespread in this country. And the cardiologists wanted to get together and look at it from a scientific point of view. And I'm being a scientist. I said, you know, great opportunity. So the CDC and the NIH funded a huge trial. It was called the TAC trial, T-A-C-T. And the TAC trial recruited a bunch of doctors who were doing chelation into seeing if we could do what is called a double blind control trial. And so let me explain a little bit about how science works. You know, there is multiple ways of looking at science and medicine. There is the personal experience, like I talked about years ago when we had the experience of people using lead and getting heart disease and how doing chelation on five patients helped them. So that's the personal experience. Then people keep a log of their experience over many years, and we did. And we found that many patients benefited from it. But like we mentioned earlier in the show, every disease Every, every treatment modality can have a downside. So what you want to do is to say, is the downside bigger than the upside or is it the other way around? And that's where a trial comes in. Yes, even chemotherapy, you're going to lose a few patients here and there, but you benefit in the long run. So you say it's a good thing. And that's where the TAC trial was. And the TAC trial looked at patients and we gave placebos to half the patients and we gave the active treatment to the other half to see how we would do it. And we'll talk more about it. Yeah. <laughs> You're seeing me going, okay. And we're going to continue our conversation with Dr. Rajiv Chandra when we return worldwide at whenyouneedafriend.com. Thank you for your text and keep those texts coming. We'll be right here waiting for you.
Okay. So um, basically, when you're talking about the, the, the test that you did, because we, we're now on our, we're going into our fourth, um, yeah. our, our fourth segment. And I, you know, the fact that well, first of all, chemotherapy, the, the, I, I just want to say something. I want to ask you, um, you know, PubMed, you know, uh, uh, there's a PubMed, uh, there's several that uh, chemotherapy, the long, the, the, um, the five-year survival rate of chemotherapy is 2.1%. And I've had doctors that are holistic that do a, a whole mind, body, spirit approach to healing. And um, their survival rate for stage four is 70%. These are clinical trials that they're doing. And I'm excited to uh, bring Dr. Um, Dr. James Forsyth in the show and you know, Dr. Connealy and all these doctors that are making a, a difference out there and trying to do these, these, um, these trials that are not, there, nothing's happening where people are not, uh, people are not being aware of, of what's happening with, with chemotherapy and other modalities as well. They're shutting them down, just like they right. shut you down. Right. And you know, that, that's exactly right. So, so chemotherapy for different kinds of cancer is, you know, we, we, it's not one chemotherapy. There's multiple modalities and there is multiple uh, different kinds of cancer. So which one works where? There are cancers that are totally cured by chemotherapy. We know that when this testicular cancer and Burkitt's lymphoma. Totally but the, the patient, if the patient is allergic to chemo, chemo right. won't work. Even if, okay, so, so, so there are so tests that they can do. do. Exactly. Yeah. So what you have to do is basically look at the patient and look at what is called a trial. So a trial takes a lot of patients in and we look at individual patients and what the results of the trial come back. And this is an important point is in general, this treatment works for this kind of patient. And that's all the trial says in general. It doesn't say you will do better with it. Okay? It just says in general. Mm -hmm. So the trial that we did showed that in general, chelation therapy works for diabetic patients with a heart attack better than the standard of care. Wow. No, and that's what it said. It doesn't say every diabetic with a heart attack will do better. It doesn't say that for some people bypass is better. Yes, but in general, and that's what it says. And the same with chemotherapy. And I don't want to get into chemotherapy because no, I'm no, not. No, a, no, 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 no. And and uh, but I just I just wanted to add that because right. I've, yeah. And there are there are you know different studies, and you look at each study differently. You look at the study and you say, yeah, that's a good study but it really is not powerful enough. Or you look at a study that says, yeah, that's a good study, but clinically it makes no sense because when we get down to it, the number of people who are gonna get benefited is so narrow that I'm never gonna see a patient that fits all these criteria in my life. Yeah. You know, And that happens too. I mean, you may find that a study is great, but it's no use to anybody. But last night you said to me that the FDA, because of your MD, you can text Lillian McDermott or leave her a voicemail at 407 37 Because of your MD, Once again, not here's Lillian. holistic only. Welcome back to the Lillian McDermott Radio Show, where we always learn with one another. Today's teacher is Dr. A cardiologist, Dr. Rajiv Chandra. And Dr. Chandra, we, he's, he's done 20 years of research about chelation, especially how it affects the cardiovascular system. And uh, if for those of you who want to learn more, there's so much out there. Uh, Dr. Chandra, I'm so grateful for you to share, uh, that you've come to share this information so that we can learn a new truth about different modalities. How does someone know if they are a candidate for chelation? And, and, and I also want to finish your story about why you've chosen not to do chelation anymore. Okay, so let's do the first question first. How does somebody know it? The first thing is, do you have heart disease? Do you have blockages in your carotids? Do you have blockages in your legs? And carotids are simple. It's an ultrasound. Heart disease is a stress test. And blockages in your legs are simple. It's also an ultrasound. So those things are a simple medical test that you can have somebody do it. Uh, physicians do it. Insurance companies pay for it. 
and uh, there are people who are getting these testing done on their own money as well. The total cost is not that much. So once you know that you have a blockage, that's when you begin to look at what things can be done to mitigate it. And like you mentioned, diet is the first line. Now, exercise, if your stress test is good still, exercise is the second line. You know, right away, you want to get into the diet. You want to start eating non-GMO food, anti-inflammatory foods. You want to cut out your trans fats. You want to start making healthier food choices, uh, cutting down the portions immediately. And you want to start exercising and start gradually. There's uh, all kinds of exercise programs out there that won't tax your heart too much and as you get stronger. So that's the first treatment. Mm -hmm. Then begin exploring what else is available. So then there are medications, there's chelation, there's procedures, and a whole bunch of those. The study that we did, the TAC trial, focused in, and we had to focus in because, you know, if you looked at everybody around the board, A, the results would get diluted, and B, it would be very expensive and too long to do it. So reality was the taxpayer was funding this study because chelation is no longer on patent, so no company is going to fund it. The mm -hmm. taxpayer is funding it, and as being good stewards of the tax dollar, we didn't want to go and do everybody. So we focused in on patients who had diabetes and had a heart attack. Patients who have diabetes and had a heart attack are particularly high risk of having a second heart attack and dying early. Mm -hmm. So those are the sickest of the group of people that we have talked about. Diabetes, heart attack, and now we've got patients uh, and they are typically hard to treat because their disease is so diffuse that it's hard to go in and do a bypass. It is hard to go in and do balloon procedures. So those are the people we looked at and we said, let's compare half of getting chelation, half placebo. And what we showed in five years was the people who got the placebo did not live as long as the people who got the chelation. It was very clear cut. The answer is very clear cut. Unfortunately, uh, there were some doctors who had been doing chelation who weren't taking the adequate precautions. They were not even in the study. So mm -hmm. that media uh, coverage of a young person that passed away got a hold of everybody. and People started talking about how this is a dangerous thing to do. Well, the reason why I mentioned fear. chemotherapy the fear was- Fear campaign. It, fear campaign. It is. It is. And here is the FDA promoting you know, a treatment plan uh, using uh, various other modalities where not everybody lives. I mean, even in bypass, not everybody makes it through bypass. Correct. It happens. But the studies showed that more people made it through bypass and lived longer, at least for 10 years in the old data, uh, than people who did not have it. And people died earlier. So we promoted bypass grafting and the scientific community went behind it. You got to show that in spite of the few downs, there are more ups. And that's what a science... So the fact that one person did not do well and yet plenty of patients did well is actually proof, but you can focus in on that one person that did not do well and create a fear campaign. Absolutely. And unfortunately, and I'm not a conspiracy theorist and I don't want to sound like one, you know, but unfortunately there were some people who, and they're not really practicing doctors. There's a group of pathologists, um, you know, who really haven't treated patients up in, uh, in the Boston area, uh, who began to promote this fear campaign. And there was a significant amount of money funded into them, and, and the fear campaign took a hold of it. And for some reason, you know, I mean, and, and the FDA is a government agency as well, and they do have funding issues and all the rest of it. And I can understand their position. I think it was, they should have had a little bit more uh, strength to stand back and say, this is just a fear campaign, but they did not. They began to look at it with a critical eye and it got to the point where uh, I decided that it wasn't worth continuing to do it until the second study, which is now ongoing, got completed. And then we were absolutely on a sure scientific footing and there was nothing anybody could say. If the second study came back positive, that yes, it does help. That's when I think the, the scientific community, myself included, will have absolutely no qualms about doing it again. But, uh, okay, so Dr. Chandra, one of the things that you shared last night is because you're an MD, uh, FDA can come in and do major damage to your practice. And so you chose not to do it because there are holistic doctors that are out there, alternative naturopaths that are doing chelation 
that have decided that they're there they don't have any they want to continue doing it they feel that this is something that um they have less to lose than a, than you the, that you might have so um there are reputable areas that are places that you can get chelation today right dr chandra that's right in in brevard county uh, i was the last one doing it and like you said uh, it's a very personal decision i mean my business my my livelihood is practicing cardiology and the fda and the various medical boards have a huge say in whether i can continue my practice or not you know so yes i had to kind of Step go back. into that pressure i had to take that i mean that's no question in my mind about it and scientifically the second study had not yet been done so i can't stand up in even in a in a court of law put my hand on on, on and take an oath saying yes absolutely no doubt in my mind it helps so the vast majority of physicians at this point who did chelation believe that the first study was enough um the vast majority there are still some holdouts out there but considering my personal situation i had to stop now orlando there are doctors doing it and they do holistic medicine this is what they do and the fda has much less say on what they can and cannot do so they have much more freedom and they're primarily cash pay right right and it's all cash pay yeah. it's not so, insurance so yeah. they're, they're really not not in any way um or not hugely affected by the by the regulatory uh environment and you know uh, i do send my patients to them i tell them you know if you want to get it done orlando has it uh, fort lauderdale has Jackson, some really i noticed that jacksonville has some and i'm going to research them this them. week yeah yeah exactly and i do refer it to them and you know my patients go there they they wish that we could do it here much more yeah. convenient you know because it's a treatment that takes 3 hours um and you are going to be my uh, next question how much time and how much cost right it's about 3 hours treatment uh people are doing it in an hour and a half it has never been tested on the hour and a half treatment but the 3 hour treatment has been tested for years uh, that's the one that we did i never did the one and a half hour treatment it takes about 3 hours you have to lay or sit in a comfortable chair uh we do a blood work beforehand there's you know a, a crash cart there in case your calcium level drops and there are precautions there that's and very important the calcium important. keep that monitored yep yeah, absolutely and uh, you know it is given over 3 hours don't don't open the tubing and and take a whole bunch of it and and get out of there some people are they go into the bathroom and they turn it up and get oh i'm going to get the whole thing in a few minutes yeah works much better when it takes longer so if you had to drive to somebody at some place like gas jacksonville which is another 2 hours drive at even at uh, uh at fast speeds you're talking about now about a whole day spent yeah so most patients you know can't really go to jacksonville orlando yes is an hour there an hour back that's still 5 hours of your day spent well and then how many treatments do you need to get the lead everything out of your body anywhere from 35 to 40 treatments so, oh, okay treatments. So we're we going to continue them. the we'll cut about the cost because dr chandra time flies on the lomic dormant radio show this right. is the healthiest hour ever and i want to thank you for being a part of the show and i look forward to talking about the other subject we were going to talk about today but we're going to we're going to say goodbye for now thank you so much dr chandra and i really appreciate you thank you for having me on your show appreciate and for, it for those of you watch this video i'll give you all the information for dr chandra and please remember do your research this is elmic dermat wishing you love peace joy and unexpected abundance make it the best day ever, ever. good job okay so before we go on cuz time was just going and it was just right. i had to say goodbye to my radio portion of it so let's so 40 treatments what is the cost for these 40 treatments dr chandra you know it we used to charge uh $98 for each treatment but i think it's gone up a little bit it's 110 115 um okay. because of course you know there has been inflation since then so the average cost on anywhere from 100 to 150 dollars for a treatment uh it takes about 3 hours now there are people doing it for less money but they're doing the one and a half hour treatment and again you know as a scientist i don't know if that works there are some people who say you know what that's great it it's a one and a half treatment and that's good enough for us uh there are other people who say the one and a half hours just doesn't work for us uh and there has been nothing that's been scientifically looked at between the 3 hours and the one and a half hours the original protocol called the roxima protocol rox 
C E M A Rockson protocol is for three hours. Okay. And that's okay. the one that was studied. Okay. So, you know, most people, okay. So that's, that's a commitment. It's a yes. commitment to heal. Um, mm-hmm. And I know, you know, the show airs out of Jacksonville. So my listening audience in the morning is Jacksonville and then it rebroadcasts and, you know, the Brevard from Daytona all the way to West Palm. But um, this show is being heard worldwide. There, there are so many different places. What should we look for when selecting the right place? Because, you know, we had talked about some of those bad apples that are out there that are trying to make a buck. They're not taking the precaution that needs to happen. And as a result, the saints paid for the sinners. And so with that in mind, what should we look at when going for a, um, a place where we can get chelation? Okay. So the way we did it and the things that are important. One is the safety factor. So you absolutely want to make sure that the person doing the chelation, the nurse or the doctor who is there, understands all the safety factors. And, you know, I mean, in our office, of course, we have a complete uh, advanced cardiac life support uh, crash cart and all the rest of it. Uh, I'm not saying you really need all that, but A, you want to make sure that uh, calcium is available, the person doing it wears gloves, uh, that the person doing it is good at putting IVs in, it's an RN and not just uh, uh, somebody who, mm-hmm. you know, just learned how to put an IVs in. Mm-hmm. Uh, the physician who's doing it is licensed. Uh, it's good to have somebody who can go and put you in the hospital in case an emergency does occur. That's an option, but most places, you know, that's not necessary. But the place has to be clean. And you don't want to be in a place that, you know, there is a lot of uh, not so clean stuff. I mean, you don't want blood all over the place. So those are the common things because where you mix, you have to actually mix the stuff. You have to take a bag of saline and put the EDTA in it. And unless the person doing it understands sterile technique, you can inject bacteria into somebody. It's an IV procedure. So those are the things you really want to make sure that it is safe, it is clean. And then the three hour one is the one that is standard. And I don't want to say that one and a half hour one does not work. But there is no proof that the one and a half hour works. That's number okay. one. Okay. And then there is a whole bunch of people who are really not doing chelation. What they are doing is IV infusion of vitamins and calling it chelation. Mm. So you want to make sure that EDTA is in there as well. So okay. those are the questions that you can ask. Um, yeah, I mean, you can give vitamin C to somebody in high dosages and get benefit out of that too. Linus Pauling showed that. Mm-hmm. So, that's people are calling that chelation. That's not really chelation. No, no, that's it. Vitamin C infusion, the IV. Exactly. Okay. So let's talk about real quick. I, I know that you're busy and I, I want to respect your time, but there was just so much to ask. Um, uh, what about pills? There are pills that say they're chelation pills. You know, sometimes we take these buzzwords and we turn it into a total frenzy, you know, like empty sea oil or or MCT oil and, and all the, you know, the different buzzwords that are out there. Chelation is one of them. Do mm. chelated pills, do they work? So that's, that's a great question. So like we talked in the beginning, the word chelation just means removing toxins. Correct. So actually speaking, if you took a lot of fiber, you're doing chelation because you're removing toxins out of your body. So strictly in the word itself, yes, you're doing chelation. But the studies, if you look at anybody taking pills and claiming chelation works, what they're doing is giving you EDTA by mouth. And when you take EDTA by mouth, they're claiming it gets into your body. Now, if you look at any canned food, read the ingredients on the canned food. EDTA is part of every canned food. And the reason why it is in there is because it's a preservative. And the reason why nobody cares if it is there is because your body hardly absorbs it. It goes right through. So the very fact that EDT is added to every can for preservative tells you that eating canned food then would be chelation (laughs) and should help you. And yet it is not. (laughs) You know, so logically, I just don't see how eating a huge amount of EDTA 
would help you. <laughs> and we had calculated at one point that you would basically be eating, you know, shovelfuls of EDTA to get the amount of EDTA we gave in one chelation to get into your body. And I'm not sure what side effect it would have on your stomach at that level. Again, no proof that eating EDTA helps. No proof that that does anything to your heart disease, just like the one and a half hour. The three hour infusion does work. It works with vitamin C. Uh, and one of the things, you know, happens in alternative medicine is people use buzzwords, like you said, and they use semantics to get around and promote their product. And that's what has happened. And like you said, the saints are tarnished by some of the people who go out and use these semantics. And when they don't have any benefit, they say, well, you know, obviously chelation doesn't work. Okay. Well, yeah, I know chelation doesn't work. There's a whole story about vitamin C and vitamin E and how the scientific community has concluded that vitamins don't work. And there's a reason why it doesn't. And we'll have a whole show on that one of these days. <laughs> well, you need to become a regular on the show. We, we've, we, we already determined that. Okay, so, okay, Dr. Chandra, I have one more, maybe, maybe one or three more questions left, but one more at least. Okay, so you talked about cardiology. And I've heard uh, many cardiologists that have come on the show that a sign or a symptom of heart disease is erectile dysfunction. So when a man has erectile dysfunction, would chelation benefit them? In my experience, it did. It did. It, you know, so when we were doing chelation clinically before the trial started, a bunch of patients, men, uh, did tell me that their erectile dysfunction got better. Now, the study did not look at any of them. And I don't think in that whole study, that was even part of the questionnaire. And because it had to get funded by taxpayer, I'm not sure that would have you know, gone down well with the uh, what's called the IRBs, which is what supervises it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, my personal experience, yes. Scientific proof, no. Okay. Would it work? Uh, theoretically, it should, uh, because it's a vascular disease. For the people who have erectile dysfunction as a vascular modality, it should work. If it is psychological, probably not. Correct, because everything has a psychological component. Of course. All, all disease has a psychological component. Uh, we, we've, you know, the teachers on my show have convinced me of that. And the research I've done, you know, when you treat the body only, you've got one third, uh, you know, you've got two thirds that you're not treating. If, you know, people think that if they say that I have an emotional component to my disease, there's an emotional component, some, somehow I'm saying I'm crazy. You know, um, I've had, I've, it's, I've learned, it's not, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's cultural to think that everything psychological is soft and is craziness. It isn't. I mean, there's a huge body of literature that shows, and scientifically so, um, that uh, unless you believe in something, it doesn't happen. You know, if people who believe they're going to get better, do better. And we can see that happen every day. And I'm practicing cardiology now for 31 years. I've seen a lot of people die um, when they shouldn't have died, a lot of people managed to get through because they had something to live for. Amazing, right? It is. It's, it's, and we create our reality. We create some people, I'm not saying all, and, I, and, I, and I, please, I, I understand that this is just a sum. I'm not trying to judge or anything, but a diagnosis is their way out. Yes. They're, they're checking out. They're mm -hmm. done. They're, mm -hmm. They fought the good fight. They're done. Nothing they're wrong done. with that. That's just no. them. But like you said, there are people who are healthier that should have a lot to live for, but because they believe they will die, they do. And, and the, the mind, you know, we've done a lot of shows as a certified life coach. I see it all the time. So the reformatting. I've had, I've had doctors that have come on the show that have said trauma records on the white blood cell that white mm. blood cell goes to different areas of your body that's why chakras are so important healing centers are so important releasing and 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 identifying the cause the root cause is part of the mind body spirit approach to healing i'm glad that you are um aware and that you're open to to even look at that direction because many people of science say oh that's 
nonsense. But the reality is we all have our issues. I can go all the way up my chakras and go, yep, I got that. Yep, I got that. Yeah, I got. But I know that I am, um, the creator that created me gave me the, the power to create something different in my life. Use those memories as fuel to guide me for a better me. And, you know, and that's exactly right. I mean, the scientific method, which we all subscribe to, unfortunately deals with numbers, deals with hard data. And like the great scientist Einstein said, not everything that counts can be counted. And so there is a lot more stuff that we haven't figured out yet. And once you get to that point, you begin to realize that just because we don't have proof doesn't mean it's nonsense. All it means is we don't have proof yet. Yes. And maybe down the road, we either will or we won't. And so there's plenty of work to be done in looking at what really works and what doesn't work. And when does something work and when does something not work? And, and you can see how much medicine has advanced in the last few years for people with open minds. And, you know, when we first did heart catheterizations, there's a guy called Forsman who put a tube in his own arm and got fired for it because he did an experiment on himself. And today, heart catheterizations are the standard. And in those days, he was fired for doing exactly what we today believe works. So yeah, things change. Absolutely. It's amazing, the power of our belief and what we can create. And it, it still baffles me that we have so much power and we tap into 5% of it. And I'm so grateful that you have gone beyond that 5% and that you have come on the show to, to share your wisdom with us. And I look forward to more conversations. I hope that this happens before one or two years. <laughs> Thank you, Lillian, for having me. Appreciate Thank you, Dr. Chandra. And for those of you who would like to get a hold of Dr. Chandra, um, he is at 65 East NASA Boulevard in Melbourne. He's working on getting a website, but it's um, H. E A L I N E T dot com. So healinet.com should be up in a couple of months. But yeah. here's the phone number if you want to get a hold of him. His number is 321 508 8784. Dr. Chandra, thank you so much for your powerful information. I know that you've made a difference today. Thank you, Lillian. And to you, my viewers, thank you for watching today. And I look forward to our next conversation.